Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Wilson present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are stranded on the Martian desert, a hundred miles from the nearest city. They have just come to an expanse of tiny green plants carpeting the desert for miles. Something's wrong with my throat, Commander. It feels tight. It's hard to breathe. Mine's the same way, Happy. It couldn't be the dust coming up from the ground, sir. No, it comes from the plants. Every time you take a step, the plants shoot out spores, poisoning the atmosphere. It's getting worse, Commander. What's still worse? These are poisonous lichens. Poison? What are we going to do, sir? We can't go back. No, and if we go on, these plant spores will paralyze our breathing muscles. We'll suffocate. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Electronic Burglar. Say, you want to have some fun, gang? Well, listen to this jet cycle. There's nothing in the tank but ordinary fuel, and here's the result. Just a putt-putt. That's all it is with ordinary fuel, but pour in some super fuel. Wow, that jet cycle is supercharged now. Yes, sir, gang, when it comes to supercharging, you need super fuel. And the same thing is true of you, especially in the morning when you haven't had a bite to eat for hours. So to really get up ahead of steam, to really get set for a lightning takeoff, you have to get supercharged. And here's Buzz Corey's way of doing it. He eats a good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Bite-sized checks. Checks, the cereals that taste so good. Checks, the cereals that are so crisp, so absolutely different. So take a tip from Buzz Corey. Eat a good breakfast with a super cereal and get supercharged. The super cereals, rice checks, wheat checks. Even on the man-made planet Terra itself, few citizens are aware of the existence of the Maris Design and Development Company. Yet from Mercury to Pluto, there's hardly a man, woman, or child whose life isn't made more secure and pleasant because of the engineering know-how in the creation of electronic devices by the Maris Company. And so when Howard Maris reported that his Terra offices had been burglarized, Commander Corey assumed personal charge of the investigation. Right now, Buzz and Happy are standing before the damaged door of the Maris Company vault, questioning the perplexed and worried executive, Howard Maris. I can't understand why the alarm system didn't work. I said it myself last night, just as I always do. How do you set it? There's a lock switch in my private office. Once that switch is set, nobody can force an entrance to the building without setting off the alarm. But what if somebody had the key to the outside doors? If they used it before regular opening time, even a key would set off the alarm. The only sign of force, inside or out, is at the vault door. Mr. Maris, are you positive you set the alarm switch last night? Absolutely. And the alarm did work, you know. Yes, but several hours too late. By the time our men got here, the metal on the endurium door had cooled where the Atomo torch had melted it. It's the most baffling thing I've ever run into, Commander. Mm -hmm. One fact is pretty clear, Mr. Maris. Yes, what's that? Whoever did this job was extremely familiar with your operation. Are you suggesting it was an inside job? Yeah, it almost had to be. Just look at what was taken. Yes, the analyscope plans. The most valuable thing in the vault. Well, excuse me, sir, but uh, what is this uh, analyscope? It's a device for detecting mineral deposits hundreds of feet underground. It's ten times more efficient than any other instrument or method we have. Those plans in the hands of someone who knows their value are worth at least a million space credits. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Mary's here. Oh, very well. Commander, I'm wanted in my office. Would you excuse me, please? Surely, Mr. Maris, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, Commander, if it was an inside job, why did the thief have to use an atomic torch on the vault? He got into the building without setting off the alarm. The alarm didn't go off until the thief was safely away. If I didn't know Maris so well, I'd suspect him of being involved in the robbery. Well, how about his uh, chief engineer, Cheller? Uh, they both agreed to a brainograph test. I think they'll pass it. They've worked with Robbie and me on top-secret projects a number of times. Maris and Chella are exceptionally honest. Well, the security department men have gone over everything and haven't found a single clue. What's the next step? The brainograph. Excuse me, sir, but have a look at this. What? On the floor of the vault here, it looks like broken glass. It is. 
Somebody dropped his glasses. Gather it up carefully, Happy. Yes, sir. Well, there's hardly anything left but slivers. Don't cut yourself, but get all of it. Hey, Maris doesn't wear glasses. Neither does Cheller. Happy, don't mention this to anyone. We'll have a check made on Maris' employees to see who does wear glasses. I hope there are enough large pieces there to tell what the optical formula is. I've got it, sir. The pieces are in this piece of paper. All right, Happy. We'll send it over to the lab. Goodbye, Stokes. And so long, Maris, and thanks. Don't make that any time. Now, Commander, you mentioned a brainograph test whenever you're ready. Fine, Mr. Maris. By the way, the man who just left, he looks familiar. Oh, that was Ward Stokes. He's a precision machinist. Does special assignments for me from time to time. Oh, sure. I remember him now. About a year ago, Major Robertson had him work on a special view scope for the security lab. Oh, that's so? I had him in mind for the analyscope job. Did you discuss it with him? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't do that until I'd checked with security. That's our standard policy on really important jobs. Stokes just dropped in to pick up an instrument case he left in my office. I see. Your man, uh, Captain Scoville, talked to him. Captain Scoville and his men will remain on duty here for a day or two, Mr. Maris, checking the alarm system. Yes, Commander, I understand. They won't interfere with your regular operations any more than they have to. Now, if you'll get Cheller, Happy and I will take you to headquarters for the brainograph test. Oh, Stokes, uh, you got into case all right. Yes, walked right into Maris' office. One of Corey's men gave me the one spellbook, but didn't even stop me. <laughs> Has the case been tempered with? Well, it was on the floor exactly where I left it yesterday. After all, it looks... Just like what it's supposed to be, an instrument case. <laughs> yes. Uh, not even Boss Corey would suspect this small box of being an electronic burglar. And now that we've got it back here, no one will ever suspect. Oh, I see you found your spare glasses. Yeah. Uh, you know I worn glasses for 30 years, and I never broke a pair till last night. And you never cracked a safe till last night either. Oh, did you? <laughs> well, if I did, I, I wouldn't have been so awkward when I removed the protective goggles. No. Nah. Well, it was a small price to pay for what we've got. Yes. Uh, that reminds me, you better put that robot burglar away and help me copy the analscope design. Where do you want me to put the burglar? In the staging room for now. All right. This uh, stage set's a great piece of work, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> Startling duplicate of Merce's private office. Oh, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Otherwise, we couldn't have trained our mechanical helper to find the alarm switch in the real office. You know, I've made dozens of machines operated by electric eyes. But until you came along, it never occurred to me to, <laughs> well, to... Yes, to make a machine that works for you instead of somebody else. Yes, Bartram, I guess that's it. <laughs> The toughest part of the whole job was getting a hold of Maris' burglar alarm key long enough to make a duplicate. <laughs> Maris doesn't suspect us. Corey doesn't suspect us. I'd say we pulled it off without a hitch. But now we'd better get ready to blast off from Mars. Happy, I suppose you heard the results of the brainograph test. Yes, sir. Maris and Cheller didn't have anything to do with the robbery. Not only that, but they haven't the remotest idea who might have done it. That's great. They accept that it doesn't help us much. Oh, how about the fragments of glasses? Well, the lab couldn't tell a thing. The boys did their best, but the pieces aren't big enough to indicate the optical formula. Oh, well. Maybe it wasn't a thief that dropped it there anyway. Maybe not. Maris says that he and Cheller are the only ones that go into the vault. <laughs> we would get this clue just when our chief optical expert is in the hospital. Dr. Pricer? Yes. I contacted Pricer and showed him the fragments on the telescreen. He thinks he could determine the lens formula after he's out of the hospital. When will that be? In ten days. You know, I think I'll take his suggestion... Pricer says this man Stokes might be able to help us. Stokes? Oh, the fellow Maris was talking about? Yes. Stokes helped Pricer on some high-precision optical work a while back. Pricer thinks he's great. He could well be, with both Maris and Pricer raving about him. Now, let's pay him a visit, Happy, and see if he can put our glass jigsaw puzzle together. Mr. Stokes, I imagine you're a pretty busy man, but at the moment, you're the only one who can help us. I'm rather rushed, Commander, but if it's for the Space Patrol, I'll be glad to if I can. I have some fragments of what apparently was once a pair of glasses. Can you determine the optical formula from these small pieces? Why, it would be rather difficult. May I ask why you want this information? By tracing the prescription, we might be able to check with various opticians and find a thief. A thief? Yes. Confidentially, I'll tell you that these fragments were found in Maris's vault after the burglary. You know about that, of course. Uh, yes, but perfectly outrageous. And uh, this is the only clue you have so far. Oh. Well, I'm afraid I couldn't give you a very accurate analysis, Commander. I see. Well, perhaps Dr. Pricer can do it when he gets out of the hospital. 
Uh, however, uh, let me examine these fragments more closely. Will you let me take them into my lab in the next room? Of course. It won't take me long to find out if further tests will be worthwhile. He didn't seem very interested at first, Commander. It's a challenge to his ingenuity. He'll probably help us. Mm. All these pictures of gadgets on the walls. Are these soap conventions? I suppose so. Hey, come and look at this one, sir. The picture here by the door. All right. It's a miniature view scope, no bigger than your hand. An amazing piece of construction. Uh, I'd like to see the actual thing. Hey, I wonder what's in this room here. Happy. Oh, oh well, I wasn't snooping, sir. I, I just thought... Hey, look at this. What is it? For a minute, ah, I thought I'd been here before. But this is an exact duplicate of Maris's private office. It does look like it. Same furniture arrangement, same size, same fixtures. Yeah, maybe they're the same person designed the offices, and Maris's is just like Stokes. No, I don't think so, Happy. What do you mean, sir? These walls don't reach the ceiling. This is a room built inside a larger room, like a stage set. You're right. It seems kind of silly. It certainly does. And then... Hey, what's that, Commander? Machinery of some kind, but I don't see. Oh, it's that instrument case. The lid's opening. Look at it, Commander. Now the whole case is moving, rolling across the floor. I wonder what could have started that thing up. Now look, it, it's running a long rod up in the air. Yeah, very ingenious. A telescoping rod in sections with a key on the end of it. I'd sure like to have one of those things. <laughs> it looks like it's on its way to unlock something. Mm hmm. To unlock a mystery. Watch it closely, Happy. I'm going to tell him about you. Well, tell him you can probably figure out the optical prescription. Then, in a day or two, give him a fake formula. Good. Then Corey will never be able to trace you. Uh, go tell him and get him out of here. Yes, yes. Commander, I've got good news for you. Uh, Commander, where are you? In here, Stokes. Oh. Happy and I are watching this fantastic gadget of yours. How does that thing get started? Uh, here, I'll shut it off. No, wait. Let's see what it does. Uh, it's just a silly toy. I'll turn it off. Later, Stone. But, but, Commander. Hey, hey, it acts like it's looking for something. Now it's heading right for that little, that little doodle here on the wall there. The lock switch. It's feeling for the keyhole. A very clever machine, Stokes. So that's how the alarm system was shut off. Why, well, what do you mean? You can't deny this room is an exact replica of Maris's office. Suppose it is. Lots of offices are alike. I see. Then, of course, you won't mind taking a brainograph test. That'll be enough snooping, Corey. Get your hands off, you two cadet. Get their weapons, Stokes. Yes, Bart. Keep behind them in case I have to use this ray gun. So you're Stokes' partner in the burglary. Voucher, huh? Hold them, Stokes. Confound it, men. You should have locked the door. How did I know they'd be coming here? And that robot... How did it get started? The timing mechanism. I forgot to shut it off. So just 12 hours after the robbery, it started up again. Yeah. In another three hours, the robot would turn the lock switch back on, move back to its original position, withdraw its wheels and levers, and become an innocent instrument case again. Too bad Stokes has such a good reputation as a precision machinist, or we'd never have come here. It is too bad, Corey. But I'm afraid it's too bad for you. What are we going to do with them? We can't dispose of them here on Terra. We'll take them to my lab on the Martian desert, where they'll never be found. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, listen to this boy going to the breakfast table. He doesn't care if he ever gets there, does he? He doesn't like his breakfast cereal, that's why. No zip, no lift, no flavor. Now, here's a girl. Listen to how she goes to breakfast. Uh-oh, she doesn't even bother about going. Same trouble. A cereal dull as can be. No taste, no tang, no nothing. Now, here's another youngster going to breakfast. Ah, no wonder he's in a hurry. He's really going for breakfast because this fella does what Buzz Corey does. He has a checkerboard super cereal for breakfast every single morning. Rice checks or wheat checks. The cereals with that modern bite size design for easy eating. And boy, it's not just the size that makes checks easy to eat, it's that flavor. Man, oh man, checks have a flavor that keeps that spoon of yours going up and down, up and down, up and down until the cereal bowl's empty. So get the cereals that have you sprinting to the table for them. 
the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. Rice checks, wheat checks. Bars and Happy have been captured by two criminals who stole designs for a valuable new mineral detection device from the Maris Design and Development Company vault. The thieves, Stoke and Boucher, have locked a space patrolman in a compartment on a spaceship and are heading for a hideout on the Martian desert. We certainly aren't taking any chances, sir. My wrists are tight so tight, my fingers are numb. If we can work loose before the ship lands, we might be able to find a way out of this mess, Happy. Keep at it. Yes, sir. Now they cut the rockets. Still have increased gravity pull. Yes, sir. If they're carrying out their original plans, that means we're landing on Mars. We've got to work fast before they can land. Unlug the compartment, Stokes. I'll keep them covered. All right. Now you two on your feet. Let's check these ropes. Turn around. I said turn around. And I say something, I mean it, Corey. I'll remember that, Boucher. With the little time you got left, I suggest you dwell on more pleasant memories. Uh, okay. The ropes are still tight. Get moving, you two. This is our little Martian hideout. Sure is a filthy little hideout. Well, maybe we'll let you clean it up before we do away with you. Well, let's get some heat on. I'm freezing. Stokes, you're going right back to the ship and blast off for Lowell City. You still think I should make hmm. contact with Bob? Yes. I'll stay here and guard Corey and the cadet until everything is set. Leave the designs here. I'll put them in the cupboard. All right. If you find everything safe in Lowell City, then make arrangements for getting the money from Tharp, and we'll hand over the design. When do we get rid of Corey and the cadet? Just as soon as you get back. Nobody will ever find them out here in the desert. You better get going. Oh, uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. Uh, come out to the ship with me. Well, all right. I don't imagine you'll want to leave, Corey. But we'll lock the door just in case. Well, sir, we've got until Stokes gets back to get out of here. Even if we overpower Boucher, we'll need Stokes' ship to escape. Do you see a space phone in here? No, sir. Maybe there's one hidden around someplace. Happy, there's a heating control. Kick the switch with your foot. You cold, sir? No, but put it on full, quickly. Yes, sir. There it is, sir. Good. Now, if this room will just heat up in a hurry. Well... There goes Stokes. Now, when Boucher comes into this heated room, I have a hunch you'll have some trouble with his glasses. Huh? Coming in from the cold air, they'll fog up just like the windows. Say, yeah, then we can rush him. And the best we can hope to do is knock him down with a headlong dive until we can get our hands free. Well, here he comes. Get ready. Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. Now we'll just relax. Ah, oh, you got the heat on. I told you space patrolmen were... Hardy souls accustomed to cool. Confound it. Uh, my glasses are... Okay, Happy. Uh, hey, get off of me. He dropped his gun, Commander. Take it out of the way. Uh, That's it. Uh, Can you handle Boucher with your hands tight, sir? I won't have to. They're loose, Happy. All right, Boucher. Let go of me. And stop struggling on your feet. I'll take the gun, Happy. Boucher, untie the cadet. Uh, wait till I get my breath. You knocked all the wind out of me. It's all right, sir. The ropes are working loose. Good. Out here, is there a space phone in this building? No, there was a portable set on the ship, but I forgot to bring it in. You just have to wait till Stokes returns. You'll get a nice surprise when he walks in that door. Should we tie Boucher up, sir? That might be a good idea. We won't have to watch him so closely. Boucher, get away from that cupboard. I'll get him, Commander. They're not there. They're gone. What are you talking about? Uh, the anoscope design. Stokes never put them in a cupboard. I saw him walk over there. He double-crossed me. The dirty rat. What good would they do you if they were there? Don't you see? Stoke isn't coming back, and we're stuck here. He's right, Happy. This puts all of us in a tough uh, spot. Boucher, how far did you say it was to the nearest city? Uh, a hundred miles. A hundred miles of desert. And we don't have any way to call for help. We'll die out here. We only got food for two days. Maybe. But we're not going to stay here. Let's take what food and water we can and start across the desert. On foot? We could never make it. We're going to try it. Now, where's the food locker? Come on, Boucher. You're lagging behind. Don't make me walk anymore, please. You've got yourself into this mess. You're going to keep moving. All right. I'll try to make it. That's it. Now stop blubbering and save your breath. Uh, uh, hey, this 
These green plants are all around us. They're lichens, Happy. In the Martian summer, they turn rust colored. Oh, stop. Wait, wait. Now what? I feel sick. Something's wrong with my throat. Well, I don't feel so good myself, uh, but we've got to keep moving. Hold on a minute. There's something uh, strange in the air. It's dust coming up from the ground, sir. Every time we step, a little puff of dust spurts up. Uh, and the lichens, Happy, they're spores. Spores? Yes, yeah, tiny cells from these plants. This kind is poison. Well, uh, Getting into our throats, uh, lungs. Uh, uh, let's get out of them, quick. But we've got to keep on going. The plants stretch for miles in all directions except uh, behind us. Then let's go back. We can't go back. Uh, uh, Commander, these spores, what do they do? If we keep inhaling them, they'll paralyze our breathing muscles. We'll suffocate. I'm going back. I'm going back. Boucher, come back here. Grab him, Happy. No. Boucher, keep your head. Oh. All this stomping around is making you worse. Stand still, Boucher. Be quiet. Look around examine the terrain. Maybe we can find a bare stretch of ground. Uh, it's hopeless. We're trapped. Trapped on the desert. I said be quiet. Uh, See anything, Happy? No, sir. Except up that low hill there. It seems to be a tower of some kind. Uh, yes, a power relay tower. There's one every uh, 20 miles. Maybe there's a space phone at the tower. If we can get there, we could call for help. That's worth a try. Come on, let's go. Uh, Come on, Boucher. Just a few yards more. I can't. I can hardly breathe. I don't see anything that looks like a space phone, Happy. Neither do I, sir. Just some wheels and gears. And those are to adjust the receiving and deflecting coils at the top of the tower. Uh, you mean we can't call for help after coming all this way? I'm afraid not. Uh, then what good is this monstrosity? Well, I'll die here under the tower. Look, Boucher, lie down uh, and rest a minute and keep quiet. Uh, well, uh, sir, by looking at the coils, can't we tell the direction to take to Lowell City? Yes, but it's straight across those poison lichens. Now, wait a minute. If we'd return those wheels, if we'd interrupt the power beam, the beam would miss the next relay tower. Hey, yeah, they'd have to send somebody out to investigate. Well, then do it. Turn the wheels. Cut off the power. Boucher, do you realize that uh, human lives may depend on that power beam? Well, what about our lives? Our lives depend on it, too. Turn it off. Turn well, what it we off. might do, Turn Happy, we might deflect it slightly, just enough to register on the instruments at the monitor station. Well, how could we be sure we weren't turning it too far? See that dial? It points to zero. That means it's right on the beam. The red lines on either side are the danger limits. Here, let's release the holding mechanism. Now we'll turn the wheel carefully. The indicator is still on zero, sir. The control mechanism has a high gear ratio for accurate focusing of the beam. N now it's moving, sir. Halfway to the danger line. That ought to alert the maintenance crew. Now we'll spin the wheel the other way, back and forth. Want me to take over again, sir? You must be tired. All right, Happy. Thanks. You've been doing that for half an hour and nothing happened. Turn the beam off. Clear off. That's the only way to make them pay attention. It'll be dark in a little while. Nobody will be able to see us. Commander. Commander, look. It's an atmosphere ship. And it's headed right for the tower. Oh, wait to them. Make sure he sees us. He'll see us. Don't worry. It's a power commission ship. All right, sir. See the big red circle on the hull? All right, Happy. He's coming in for a landing. Set the indicator back to zero. Uh, there it is, sir. I'll lock it in place. Uh, control secured, sir. All right, let's get to the ship. We've got an appointment with Stokes in Lowell City. Uh, I, I told you and, and the commander how you can pick up Stokes and, and the man who's going to buy the design. Uh, they will go on my record, won't they? Oh, sure, but I'm afraid it's a little late now to start thinking about getting off easily. Happy, I just talked to a little city space controller in the pilot's space phone. They're putting a guard around Stokes' ship in case he tries to blast off. Fine. Uh, when do we get to Lowell City? In a couple of minutes. We'll turn Boucher over to the spaceport guards and go after Stokes and Stein. Well, Stokes, the design seemed to be complete. They're all there, Mr. Thought. Now I'd like my money. Of course. I'm glad you and Boucher changed your minds and made a straightforward business deal. Uh, the original plan was just a precaution in case we were being followed. But everything worked out so well. All right, Stokes. I'll take those plans. Of course. Get Bob happy. I'll handle Stokes. Yes, sir. Where do you think you're going? Oh. All right, Stokes. You had enough? Oh, yes, Corey. Let up. I've got Bob command. Uh, keep him covered. I'll get the anoscope design. Yes, sir. All right, Stokes. Move over next to your partner. Just tell me one thing. How did you get out of the desert? 
Well, Commander, why don't we let Boucher explain that to him? It'll give them something to talk about for the next several years they're going to be spending together. <laughs> we'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Say, you want to hear something funny? Well, listen to this. That's a word scrambler, gang. A machine that scrambles secret messages sent by space patrollers over the spaceophone. Now, do you want to know what the message said? Well, here, I'll have it unscrambled for you. <laughs> to get supercharged, eat a good breakfast with instant Ralston. That's one of the most important messages a space patroller ever sent. Yes, sir, when you sit down to a good breakfast with good hot Ralston, well, boy, oh, boy, that's your day to shine. For instant Ralston packs a wallop in every spoonful. It's rich whole wheat. Remember, rich whole wheat. That means it'll warm up your motor, tune up your thinker, help start off your day with a bang. Yes, that's the kind of start Buzz Corey gets. That's the kind of start you need to be a winner just like him. So come on, space patrollers, get supercharged. Eat a good breakfast with good hot Ralston. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy are on Venus on a farm where food is chemically grown in large tanks. As they walk toward a building where Tonga is held captive, huge sun mirrors atop several tall towers turn ominously toward them. Oh, the rockets, Commander, is really getting hot all of a sudden. Yes, waves of heat. Even for Venus, this is unusual. Oh, my eyes. What a glare. Happy, don't look at those reflectors. They'll blind you. Let's run for the building and get out of this sun. Pat, look out. They're focusing those sun mirrors on us. A whole battery of them are pointed right toward us. Maybe we can dodge them. Run back this way. Commander, they've got us surrounded by those heat beams, and they're closing in. They hit us with all those at once. We're finished for good. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Space Shark, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! And now here's a message from Commander Buzz Corey. Here's a little riddle. What is it that is scarce, valuable, and necessary, yet given away free? The answer is blood, the gift of life. Yes, when grown-ups give blood at the Red Cross Center, they don't receive money, but they do receive the wonderful, deep-felt satisfaction of knowing they helped save a life. Now, how would you like to help me get more people to save lives? Join my Space Patrol blood boosters. It's lots of fun, so how about it? Join today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult-